for the first time since the chase, the playoffs, the whatever you want to call it has started, we have a non-playoff driver win the playoff opener, and for the first time in 55 years to the day, to the day, the 43 car wins at Darlington. That is right. No playoff driver won. Eric Jones in the 43, who has been having a fantastic year. I think he finished top 15 in the regular season standings. He had some great runs, looked very competitive, and today it came together, and he spoiled the playoff party and won at Darlington. What a feel-good story. Everyone likes Eric Jones, I feel like. He's just a likable guy. You know, his career story, um, he moved up through the ranks, had a lot of success in the trucks, uh, Xfinity, and then he moved up to Cup for Furniture Row back in 2017 in their second car. Uh, did pretty decent. I think he won Rookie of the Year, and he almost won at Bristol that year, so really good year that year. Moved up to Joe Gibbs Racing in 2018, won at Daytona. In 2019, he won this race, the Southern 500, uh, and then after 2020, he was dropped from Joe Gibbs Racing, and he went to Richard Petty Motorsports, where they had a ride open up after Bubba Wallace left to go to 2311, so it was a new start for Eric Jones, something new, something long-term. And 2021 wasn't great, but 2022 with the next-gen car, it seemed to be promising. It seemed to be better. And Eric Jones very quickly this season showed his speed at Auto Club, led 20 or so laps, finished in the top five, maybe runner-up. I can't remember exactly where, but in the top five, he was one of the best cars that day. And today, this week at the Southern 500, once again, he has won. And it was no fluke. He was top five, top 10 most of the day. Sure, he had some help, but he had to hold off one of the best to do it. Diddy Hamlin has won multiple Southern 500s in the past. He's in Joe Gibbs Racing Equipment. He's been one of the best cars all night, and Eric Jones held him off. Last restart launched. Denny Hamlin was never far away from him. He was always right there, putting the pressure on Eric Jones. If Jones made one mistake in that final 20-lap run, Denny Hamlin would have probably gotten past him. But Eric Jones held strong. He held his own, didn't get intimidated by Denny Hamlin, didn't make any mistakes, didn't you know crack under the pressure. Eric Jones won the Southern 500, and it was an incredible drive. Those last 20 laps by Eric Jones, that was incredible to watch. And the petty GMS car hold off Denny Hamlin in that Joe Gibbs racing car, was, that was incredible to watch. Uh, one of the maybe one of the top performers of the year. Maybe that's an overreaction just because it's an initial reaction to the race, but what a performance by Eric Jones. I mean, seriously, and all the chaos that happened tonight. And let's talk about how he got the lead. This race had everything chaotic happen in terms of the playoffs. The playoffs, if it wasn't for the playoff chaos, Eric Jones winning would have been like the only thing I feel like that was like thrilling, but the playoff chaos hit, it hit a lot. But let's talk about the last thing that happened. Martin Truex Jr. might have had the best car tonight. Kyle Busch led the most laps. Him or Truex had the best car. But Truex had gotten past Kyle Busch on track. After that last round of pit stops, Truex was well ahead of Kyle Busch. Looked like he was going to cruise to the win. If there was no cautions or anything, then his power steering goes out. Then his temperatures start rising inside of his car. Then everything starts to break down. Truex goes to pit. His day is done. Just one week after missing the playoffs, Martin Truex Jr., after having one of the best cars this week, ends up being out of the race. No win. Uh, not even a good finish. And then, after that, there's a caution. Cody Ware hits the wall, spins out, and he is done for the day with a caution with about 26, 27 to go. And Kyle Busch comes out of the pits as the leader. And what happens next? Kyle Busch, while leading the race under caution, his engine blows up. Smoke starts flying out of the side of the car, out of the back of the car. Kyle Busch is out of the race after dominating this race, leading over 150 laps, winning a stage, looking absolutely phenomenal all night long. He's out. He is out of the race, finishes in 30-something. We'll talk about him later. And that gives the lead to Eric Jones. Jones and Reddick line up on the front row. Jones gets a really good launch. Reddick and Hamlin get battling for a bit, which allows Reddick or Jones to pull out of the lead for a little bit. But then Hamlin just slowly inching in. And, you know, then it was about steady for a bit there. But then that last five laps, Hamlin really gave it his all, really pushed. 
and Jones held him off. What a fantastic finish. Uh, those last 20 laps, they were, you know, hold your breath. Uh, I think the majority of people there were rooting for Eric Jones. I mean, I, I genuinely don't think I've ever seen anyone that's hated Eric Jones. He's just a really likable guy. Uh, the 43, an iconic number in NASCAR, obviously, with Richard Petty. Uh, and, you know, obviously him owning the team. That's the first time Richard Petty as a team owner has won since 2014 with Eric Almarola. Uh, what a race. What a performance. But, oh, my gosh, the playoff drama in this race. We just talked about Kyle Busch, but let's talk about some of the other guys. Kevin Harvick, he had a top 10 day. He had a bad pit stop early on. He was in the 30s, but he rallied back into the top 10. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of pit stops, his car catches on fire. First, he said the rocker box was on fire. Then he said the digital dash was on fire. Then the rest of the car, there's fire coming out of the exhaust. He has to park it, you know, way, way, way down on the inside wall, way out of harm's way. It took him a while to throw the caution, which was a bit concerning. But, you know, he did get out of the car safely. He was okay. But Harvick was furious in his post-race interview or his exit interview, whatever you want to call it. He was calling the car crappy. He said the design of the car is crappy. It's cheap parts. Uh, you know, no one cares about the car. Everyone's cheap. Like he was ranting at the end of this race. He was furious. Lots of questions about the safety of the car. And, you know, he's been pretty vocal on that. Uh, but now like Kevin Harvick just was tearing into the next gen car. Uh, other playoff guys with issues, Kyle Larson, one of the favorites for this race. He had engine problems in stage one, went multiple laps down. He ends up rallying back to finish like 13th, 14th, 12th on the lead lap. Um, Hendrick Motorsports, and you know, the championship leader, Chase Elliott. Two laps to go in stage one, just freaking crashes. I don't know if he blew a tire, something broke, he just lost it, but he crashes into the wall. They have the 10-minute damage vehicle policy, which is new as of this week, 10 minutes versus 6 minutes. Elliott can't get the car finished in time. He finishes dead last and only gets one point on the day. So all of a sudden, Elliott goes from that huge buffer. Thankfully, that other guy's got involved in issues i think his gap is a little bit bigger but he was like only five points above at one point so elliot had a disaster start to the playoffs larson looked like he was going to have a terrible start ross chastain he had something go on with his left front there's something in the some type of pin rods or something pin something and he went multiple laps down finished in the 20s daniel suarez had a top a top five car and he got a speeding penalty when that harvick caution came out so he was pinned a lap down. He ends up getting back on the lead lap through all the chaos. Uh, other playoff guys that had issues. Let's see here. Briscoe was involved in that Chase Elliott crash. Uh, Austin Dillon was irrelevant at some points, but ends up getting like 17th or something. Uh, da, 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 da. Other than that, oh my gosh. What a day. Suarez and Bell got into it at one point. Like Bell at the end of stage two just ran him into the wall. And then Suarez was like, I'm going to... You know, get them back or something. I wonder if they fought. Are we going to have a fight the first race of the playoffs? Let's see if there's a fight. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. I don't see a fight yet. But anyways, uh, oh my gosh. What a day. What a race. Let's, uh, yeah. Playoffs. The NASCAR playoffs. I hate this system. I truly do. But I'm not going to deny that it gives us some crazy entertainment. But... Let's look at the finishing results. Eric Jones, what a drive, what a race. Eric Jones, genuinely such a likable guy, as I've already said multiple times, a pretty good driver, and he has driven fantastically this year. The difference between him and Ty Dillon, his teammate, has been huge this year. Uh, I think he's per I personally think he's just outperforming the equipment a good bit. I don't think Petty GMS is as bad as they, you know, once were. I don't think they're 20th to 25th, but I think it's a mixture of the car has gotten better for Petty GMS, but also that Eric Jones is just driving really, really well right now. And today he proved it. Uh, he's been proving it all season. Auto Club, uh, Talladega, you know, he's had some really, really good runs this year. He could have multiple wins, honestly. But today, he kept his calm, he kept his composure, and when he got that lead, he never looked back, and he won. Fantastic drive, fantastic day for Eric Jones. This is an amazing win. Great to see the 43 car back in victory lane, a historic number in NASCAR. Um, yeah, just really cool to see him back in victory lane, and also to see the 43 back in victory lane. We've seen the 43, the 24, the 3, 
and the 48 in victory lane in the same year. When's the last time that happened? Has that ever happened? I don't think that's ever happened. So, yeah. Anyways, um, we're just a Harrison Burton away from, you know, some of the most iconic, oh my, uh, car numbers in NASCAR history going into victory lane. Wow, just what a performance by Eric Jones. I'm really, really happy for him. Denny Hamlin finished the second best possible day for him if he couldn't get the win. Uh, no one locks themselves into the second round of the playoffs at the playoff opener. As I said, first time that has ever happened. Um, so, yeah, I, I can't believe a non-playoff driver won. Um, I said that there was going to be a non-playoff, a couple non-playoff drivers winning. In fact, I said Eric Jones was going to win Talladega. I didn't think he would win Darlington, but wow, <laughs> Eric Jones. All right, but Denny Hamlin finishes second, gets a really good points day, stage points, runner up. Uh, he's going to be very safe going into Kansas and Kansas. Joe Gibbs Racing, Toyota was great there. But, oh, my goodness, they got to be concerned after today. Two cars blow up with under 40 laps to go. That's got to be a little bit concerning on the Joe Gibbs Racing side of things. This was like an old like an old race, an old NASCAR race. We got cars having mechanical failures, the 43 wins at a historic track. Like, dude, this is like back to the future. I'm in the past or something. I don't know what's happening. Third place, Tyler Reddick. He's really good at Darlington. He did great today. He was in the top 10. He wasn't one of the best cars. He was off the Gibbs car. He was probably worse than Byron. But he takes advantage of the late race chaos. He looked really good in that last run. Finishes third. Gets a good chunk of points. So, solid day for him. Fourth place, Joey Logano. He got some stage points. He led a lot of laps as well. Um, he was leading early on in that first stage. But a bad pit stop kind of messed him up. And, you know, they barely got a stage point in that first stage. And he ends up finishing fourth. So good points day for him. Same thing for Christopher Bell. Good amount of points today. Just what they needed to do. They were kind of close on that uh, playoff bubble line with their playoff points. So they needed a good run today. And with the issues that other playoff contenders, you know, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, even like Chase Elliott, Ross Chastain, that they encountered, that's going to help out Bell a lot. Sixth place and seventh place. Michael McDowell and Brad Keselowski Great runs for those two non-playoff guys. A lot of non-playoff guys up front today. As I said, Eric Jones obviously won the race, but Martin Truex Jr. led a ton of laps. He was in the top five most of the day. Michael McDowell had a great qualifying session, and he ends up being in the top ten most a good chunk of the day. Finishes sixth. Brad Keselowski finishes in seventh. Bubba Wallace, you see him back there in ninth. Uh, but, yeah, they had really good runs today. Congratulations to them. Eighth place, William Byron. A little bit of an up and down day, but a huge, huge start to the playoffs. Uh, I talked about in my playoff preview video how bad the 24 teams been since their Martinsville win. Only one top 10 since then. Today, they looked great. They looked like that beginning of the season 24 team at the beginning of this race. They laid a ton of laps. They won that first stage. They were up in the top five. Um, but they at one point had a little bit of a scare with uh, a potential exhaust issue but you know that ended up resolving itself then byron was pinned a lap down i think he had to take the wave around for that caution for harvick that kind of put him behind a little bit but he ends up rallying back for an eighth place finish so a top 10 in the playoff opener when other guys had problems is actually a really really good run for william byron ninth place bubba wallace huge for him huge for the 45 team in terms of the owners championship uh, that's why they put Bubba Wallace in that 45 car. He was a good top 15 car today. Ends up in the top 10, so a really good run for him. 10th uh, place, Alex Bowman. A kind of a quiet day, but a top 10. No issues. He got a few stage points in stage two. He did everything right. No problems, no run-ins. Just stayed right there. Avoided trouble. Watched other people have trouble. Got a top 10. 11th, Eric Almirola. 12th, Kyle Larson. Oh, my word. Uh, yeah, Larson started up in the fifth position, I want to say, uh, and then fell back into 10th, was kind of just hanging around there, and then all of a sudden, the engine just decides to die. His engine blew back in the spring at Darlington, had an engine problem last week at Daytona. He's had other engine problems, I think it was at Phoenix, so that was a bit concerning, but then all of a sudden, it just decided to revive itself, and everything came back, and Larson just kind of rode around, 
multiple laps down, three to four laps down, and he ends up, you know, taking some wave rounds, getting a free pass, gets back on the lead lap through all the chaos and finishes 12th. Considering how the day started for them, I think 12th is a great result. Uh, yeah. 13th, Ryan Blaney, a d decent day for him. He was in the top five, top 10 at times, but Darlington's never really been his best track, but 13th, considering the problems others had. We'll look at the grid here in a bit. Not bad. 14th, Cole Custer. Not bad. Ty Gibbs, he honestly wasn't great today. He was in the 20s for the most part, but took advantage of that late race caution or one of those cautions to get back on the lead lap into the top 10. And a 15th is not bad for your first cup race at Darlington, especially your first Southern 500. 16th, Austin Sendrick. He's a playoff driver. 17th, Austin Dillon. Um, Dylan had a very, very up and down day. Terrible first stint. Fell back into the 30s. Um, you know, at some point he was up in the top 15 and then he ends up finishing 17th. So considering how bad the day started, 17th isn't too bad. 18th, Daniel Suarez. This one hurts. Uh, Suarez started the day in the pit lane. Uh, they had a failed pre-race inspection three times and they had to start from the rear and do a pass through on lap one, go a lap down, rain hits, and they end up getting their lap back pretty much immediately, but they're still at the back. Suarez charges through the field, gets up into the top five, has a run in with Bell, almost crashes, but he does survive. Then he was up into the fourth and he looked really good, was challenging some of the JGR cars at time. <sighs> then that last pit stop, speeding on pit road cannot have these errors in the playoffs when especially when you have such a good car and you're in such a tight points position Suarez speeds he gets pinned a lap down and yeah he ends up getting his lap back but he finishes 18th this truly could have been a top five day for Suarez this is a very disappointing result I think he could have had a shot at the win there if he had not had that penalty but Unfortunately, that's not how this works. Uh, Suarez, hopefully they can learn from that mistake, uh, overcome it, advance. So really good speed for them, promising speed, but just an unfortunate result. Haley, 19th, 20th, Chastain, as I said, he had issues, some type of mechanical issue, and he ends up finishing 20th. Uh, yeah, they went three or four laps down, just like Larson, but they end up finishing a lap down in 20th, a bad start to the playoffs for them. 21st, Harrison Burton. 22nd, Ty Dillon. 23rd, Daniel Hemrick. 24th, Corey LaJoy, actually. Pretty decent day. Showed some speed. Stayed out on one of those restarts and actually was in the top 10 for a good bit on old tires. It was very impressive. 25th, Landon Castle. 26th, Chris Buescher. 27th, Chase Briscoe. Already in a hole entering the playoffs with not a lot of playoff points. You know, expected to be a first-round elimination just due to his inconsistency. And they had a bad start, and then they got involved in a wreck with Chase Elliott, and they're going to be in a deficit here. 28th, Todd Gillen. 29th, BJ McLeod. 30th, Kyle Busch. Oh my gosh, Kyle Busch. With everything that's going on with him right now, the contract negotiations, all the attention on him, all the media attention, everyone talking about him every five seconds, what's he going to do next year? He finally puts together probably his best run of the season. One of his best cars, his best runs all season long. And the engine blows up while he's leading under caution with under 30 to go. That's got to be like so gut-wrenching. Yeah, that's tough. Uh, we'll look at his points position here in a minute. 31st, Martin Truex Jr. It just seems like nothing can go right for him. Uh, he's had the second highest average finish of the year behind Chase Elliott. He's top six or seven in laps led this year. Uh, he finished fourth in the regular season standings, but he missed the playoffs by three points because there were so many winners. Today, it looks like he's going to get his first win of the season. Looks like one of the best cars. Car just dies on him. You can't make it up, man. I feel so bad for Truex. He's been so good this year, but the stupid system kept him out of the playoffs. And unfortunately today, he had a race winning car potentially, and it didn't work out for him. That's how racing goes sometimes, but just unfortunate. 32nd, Cody Ware was in a couple incidents. 33rd, Kevin Harvick, as I said, raging on the radio. Or not the radio, it was his interview. It was his post-race interview. Uh, he was pretty mad about the car, rightfully so, I would say, in some areas. The car was on fire. If he's saying the dash is on fire and inside the car is on fire, that's a real problem. 
uh, especially when it's a mechanical failure, whether it's the engine, the dash, the electronic system, I don't care what it is, that is a problem when the car is catching on fire from the inside and potentially causing harm to the driver. I know they have the fire suit, they have the gloves, shoes, socks, padding, whatever. That doesn't mean it's not gonna burn you. That just kinda like, the fire suit, it's not fire, like 100% fire resistant. You can't sit in a fire for like 10 seconds and be completely fine. Like this is, it's gonna protect you a little bit, but it's not gonna completely save you from burning. So uh, yeah, I don't know what that problem is. It's still, like I said a few weeks ago, it still seems to be a Ford problem. We saw it happen with Chris Busch at Indianapolis, Joey Logano at Indianapolis, Chase Briscoe at Richmond. So I don't know if it's a Ford problem or what, but that problem, it needs to be fixed. The safety issues need to be fixed. The fire issue needs to be fixed. Like this is, if this keeps happening, if someone gets caught stuck in the car on fire, like it's gonna be a bad look for NASCAR. It's gonna be really, really bad. They gotta get on it. 34th, JJ Yaley, 35th, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., 36th, Chase Elliott, the points leader heading into this race. Their worst weekend of the season. Qualified 23rd, had no long run pace. First run fell back to 28th and then got back up into the top 15 after that first round of pit stops at the competition caution. And then the car dies. Elliot just misses the corner or something. They're dead last. One point. That playoff point advantage you had, gone. Yeah, they can't afford any more mistakes now, I don't think. Let me check the playoff bubble thingy real quick. So looking at the playoff standings here, according to Jeff Gluck, uh, Logano plus 38, Byron plus 32, Hamlin plus 38, Bell plus 28, or Hamlin plus 30, Bell plus 28. Those guys are in pretty good position. Obviously, they have a bad race at Kansas. It could go south, but maintain that, that gap at Kansas. He should be mostly safe going into Bristol. It's going to take a lot for you to fall out. Reddick plus 23, Blaney plus 20, Larson plus 17 are all in good position. Decent position, but a bad stage. And, you know, one of these guys below the cutoff line has a good stage, and then suddenly you're in trouble. Chastain plus 15, Elliott plus 14. Eh, position. You can't afford a bad day, but you get enough stage points and you finish top 10, you're going to be a good amount ahead. And then Bowman plus 10, Kyle Busch plus 8, Suarez plus 2, that can all be made up in one stage. They need to be worried. As for the guys below, Cendric minus 2, Dylan minus 4, Briscoe minus 10, Harvick minus 13. So no one in a must win after race 1. But Harvick and Briscoe cannot afford another bad race or they will be in a must win. Uh, I didn't think I'd see Harvick out in this first race. I saw Darlington as one of his strengths, but when your car catches on fire, it's hard to have a strength. Anyways, uh, that is your Southern 500 recap. I know it's a long one, but oh my gosh, we had so much to talk about. We had a shocking winner with Eric Jones stealing the playoff opener. We had multiple playoff guys with issues. We had chaos. We had lots and lots of chaos. So Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that fun stuff that I say every single video. I know it's repetitive, but it really does help out a lot, and I truly appreciate it. Uh, but what a race, man. Uh, you know, the racing itself, it was fun at times, especially those last 20 laps. Uh, but, you know, it is a long race, and it has its dull moments at times. Uh, but, you know, just that, that was a fun finish. Sure, it wasn't like the Xfinity Series with three guys alternating the lead, hitting the wall, slide jobs, all that stuff. But to see a guy hold someone off like that in that fashion was really fun to watch. So... Hope you enjoyed the race. Hope you enjoyed it. Next week we got Kansas and uh, I'll see you in the next video.